Hi there. I'm Kurt Steinbrook, pastor of Faith Lutheran Church in Wesley Chapel, Florida. And we are going through the book of Romans in this video series. We're doing a, a more in-depth study of the book of Romans through this. And if you've missed our previous videos, you can find them on our YouTube channel, or you can go to faithwesleychapel.com into our blog, where you can find the Roman series, as well as uh, there's a series on First Peter, and there are several other uh, series and devotionals and things like that that you can find there. And if you're in the Wesley Chapel area, we... Would, I'd love to invite you out to come and worship and be a part of Faith Lutheran Church. And uh, we meet every Sunday at one or at 11 a.m. And uh, you can look us up on, on YouTube, not YouTube, but on Google, or you can, of course, just go to our website and get all the information there. I'd love to have you there. But today we're going to kind of be looking at Romans 7, 2 to 3. And this is going to be a little bit different video than some of our other Romans videos, because I'm using this passage here to, as kind of a jumping off point to discuss marriage and uh, divorce and remarriage and things like that. Um, it's brought up in here, but it's not really the point of the, of the passage, but um, I thought it was a good topic for us to be able to discuss. So let's pray and then we'll, we'll start talking about it. So Heavenly Father, we pray for your wisdom today and your uh, your guidance through your spirit that in this time that we spend with you, you would draw us closer to you, that you would help us to learn more about you and your ways and your good ways, Lord. Your ways are all good and wise and pray that we would receive them as the true and authoritative word that you give us, that you would guide me in the things that I would say as well in this video and that you would just bless us in this time. We thank you for marriage. We thank you for uh, the blessings and the guidance that you give us through your word in that. And pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. So let's start with the passage, and then we'll start talking about marriage and, and divorce and adultery and remarriage and all of those types of things. So this is the past. This is Romans 7, verses 2 to 3. For a married woman is bound by law to her husband while he lives. But if her husband dies, she is released from the law of marriage. Accordingly, she will be called an adulteress if she lives with another man while her husband is alive. But if her husband dies, she is free from that law. And if she marries another man, she is not an adulteress. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. All right. Now, as I said at the beginning of this, this passage here, it gives us a truth about marriage and death and adultery, but it's being given as an illustration. The point of this section of Romans 7 is talking about how we in our baptism have died to sin, have died even to the law and the, the oversight of the law, um, and now have been brought to newness of life. And so what is our relationship with the law? That's what this is getting at. And so it uses marriage as this illustration that if a, a person is married and their spouse dies, they are freed from that law. And it's getting to the point that since you have died in your, baptized, in your baptism, you are freed from that law. Now, that is what this passage is intending to talk about, but it does it with a truth about marriage. And that truth is exactly what we just said, that uh, if someone, if you get married, right, that you're you're married for for life, and then when one or the other dies, then you are freed from that marriage and uh, able to marry again. That's the truth that's here. And so we're going to use this to to talk in general about marriage and divorce, remarriage, all of those types of things. So um, let's start with just marriage itself. So what is marriage? Marriage is was first started in Genesis chapter 2, uh, where God created Adam and Eve. And he said, therefore, a man shall leave his father and his mother and hold fast to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. So marriage is given to us. It's an institution from God. It is between a man and a woman, uh, one man and one woman, and is meant to to be that way and to provide an intimacy that we don't have in other relationships. And it's so it's meant to be exclusive in that way between that one man and that one woman for their whole life. 
So we should not, for example, invite others into that marriage in an intimate way. So uh, Hebrews 13, 4 says, let marriage be held in honor among all and let the marriage bed be undefiled for God will judge the sexually immoral and the adulterous. Right. So that marriage bed is intended only for the husband and the wife. And that's it. Uh, beyond that, uh, we have some some you know positive things that are said as well. Now, this is uh, from First Corinthians chapter seven, which has quite a bit about marriage in it. it. Says now concerning the matters about which he wrote, it is good for a man not to have sexual relations with a woman, because of the temptation to sexual immorality. Each man should have his own wife, and each woman her own husband. The husband should give to his wife her conjugal rights, and likewise the wife to her husband. For if the wife does not have authority over her own body, but the husband does, and likewise the husband does not have authority over his own body, but the wife does. So do not deprive one another, except perhaps by agreement for a limited time, that you may devote yourselves to prayer and then come together again, so that Satan may not tempt you because of your lack of self-control. So that intimacy that's found in marriage is meant to be something that is regularly done and uh, should not be withheld from each other, uh, really for for just about any reason, right? He gives, you know, temporary reasons and things like that, but uh, that should be just an active part of, of a marriage. Uh, so that's a good thing. That's a, a blessing that we're given. Um, something else that I know comes up in the question of marriage is uh, one of the questions I see is, you know, well, if two people who are not married have sex, does that mean that they are now married? Now, assuming that both of those people are unmarried, so we're not talking about adultery here. So uh, two unmarried people, if they were to do that, does that make them married? You know, sometimes in, in certain cultures, they've you know kind of treated it that way. Well, you did what? My daughter? Well, now you're, you're married, so now you have to deal with that. Um, however, it's not really something that the Bible teaches us. Uh, in fact, when the uh, Bible kind of shows that marriage and sex are they're related, obviously, they're meant to be together, but... They are not the same thing. So when an unmarried couple has sex, they are not marrying for you or marrying each other. They are fornicating. That's what the Bible calls it. And that's called sin. So there would be, you know, if you think about it, there would be no such thing as that sin as fornication if that sex just meant that they were married. So, you know, by default, you can see that it's um, that's just not the way the Bible talks about it. So it's it's a separate thing. It's a sin. And should be should not be done, um, but it doesn't mean that you are you know, oh you've been married now. Um, all right, moving on. Uh, marriage is intended to be lifelong, right? We are not supposed to be getting divorced if we can if we can help it. So, and usually we can. So let's look at that. Um, we have Matthew nineteen where Jesus talks a bit about marriage. It says in a large crowd followed him. This is Jesus. They followed Jesus and he healed them. And the Pharisees came up to him and testing him, or and tested him by asking, Is it lawful to divorce one's wife for any cause? He answered, Have you not read that he who created them from the beginning made them male and female? And he therefore man or and therefore man shall leave his father and his mother and hold fast to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. What therefore God has joined together, let not man separate. They said to him, why then did Moses command one to give a certificate of divorce and to send her away? He said to them, because of your hardness of heart, Moses allowed you to divorce your wives. But from the very beginning, it was not so. And I say to you, whoever divorces his wife, except for sexual immorality and marries another commits adultery. So um, in this, there's a lot that's going on there that talks about marriage in various ways. And we'll talk about some of those other things. But the idea here is let no one let no one tear it asunder, right? Let no one uh, separate the husband and the wife uh, during their lifetimes. That's meant to be a lifetime thing. In uh, 1 Corinthians 7, once again, this is in verse 39, it says, A wife is bound to her husband as long as he lives. But if the husband dies, she is free to be married to whom she wishes only in the Lord. Okay, so once again, it's supposed to be for a lifetime. Uh, we saw that back in our Romans passage, right? That it's only once uh, the death of the spouse happens that there's 
a release from that law of marriage. So it's supposed to be for a lifetime. And this, this is something that we just have to deal with in our society today, um, both in the church and, I mean, outside the church, obviously, these, these are good practices, but we can't, we don't expect every everyone outside the church to follow the biblical practices. Uh, but within the church, certainly, you know, we, we've gotten a little too, not a little too, we've gotten a lot, uh, rela very relaxed about divorce. Like it's just something, you know, two people just start to not get along anymore or, you know, have, have some kind of difficulties or whatever. And we just walk away from the marriage. And that's not how it was intended to be. And that's not how it's supposed to be. So that's something where we need to get better about being willing to put in the work. Marriage is not always easy. You know, there are things that are difficult to work through. But, uh, you know, there there are certain reasons that you can get divorced that are given biblically. We even saw that there in Matthew. But a lot of them, the divorces that we have today are not for those reasons. So those are things where we need to be wise about what we're doing and we need to be willing to, to put in the effort and pray for each other and work together to to make the marriage work and we find out there's great blessing in that, right that's not just a command it's not just meant to make you miserable it's meant to be a blessing for you and to make life more enjoyable and uh, a greater blessing all right so i'm trying to keep this from becoming too long of a video so we're going to be moving pretty quickly through this. This is not as in depth of a video as we could make because that would take quite a while. Um, in fact, there's one, there's a the Bible thinker I think out there who has he did a, a thing on this and it, it was a two hour video. It's, it's pretty good, so you might want to check it out. Um, but you know, there's, there's a lot to talk about with these. So when does a marriage end? Well, we can go back to our original passage, right? And we see that marriage ends when one spouse is dead so you know it's supposed to be for a lifetime but once that person once one or the other dies then the other person is uh freed from that marriage and are free to get uh remarried there you know that so that marriage has ended so there's not this kind of commitment that okay you were married and now they've died but you, you really can't uh marry someone else and you, you can you can move on with with your life um, but of course that's all up to you if you don't feel like doing that then you don't have to but the divorce or not divorce the marriage is ended at that at that point what about divorce um there are re reasons given for divorce that are legitimate though again divorce is or the even the legitimate reasons for divorce were a concession for our sinfulness so what do we have? Um, you know, is, is divorce legitimate? In some cases, yes, uh, but not all reasons are legitimate. So let's look at Matthew 19. Okay, and we've already looked at part of this, but uh, we, Jesus says, I say to you, when uh, whoever divorces his wife, except for sexual immorality and marries another commits adultery. Okay, so there's one possible reason is sexual immorality. Um, and then in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, uh, it says to the married, I give this charge, not I, but the Lord. The wife should not separate from her husband. But if she does, she should remain unmarried or else be reconciled to her husband. Uh, the husband should not divorce the wife. That was not what I was intending to go to. Uh, let's look at the fuller chapter. Hold on. Um, let's see. Okay, this is where he starts talking about, or maybe that is it. It's talking, oh, that was just talking about the fact that there could be a reason. I'm sorry, I moved on to the wrong thing. Okay, so we know adultery is one uh, potential reason. Another um, is abandonment. So let's go, let's see if I have this right. Okay, so here it says, this is 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 12 to 15. Uh, to the rest, I say, not I, that if any brother has a wife who is an unbeliever and she consents to live with him, she, he, he should not divorce her. So this is, you know, people are coming to faith and you have one person in the marriage who uh, becomes a Christian. The other person does not. Do I need to divorce them? Are we now, 
you know, what do we do with this? And she said, well, I mean, if they're willing to stay married to you, then stick with it. Don't just divorce them. Um, it continues on. If any woman has a husband who's an unbeliever and he consents to live with her, she should not divorce him. But the unbelieving husband is made holy because of his wife, and the unbelieving wife is made holy because of her husband. Um, so the, the marriage is blessed in this, that one person is is Christian, as well as the fact that the influence of that Christian and their prayers for that person and their love for that person may, in fact, uh, cause the, the spouse to become a believer, which would be great. Uh, and then um, otherwise your children will be unclean, but as it is, they are holy. Continue on with verse 15. But if the unbelieving partner separates, let it be so. In such cases, the brother or sister is not enslaved. God has called you to peace. Now that sister, brother, or sister is not enslaved is saying that they are not required uh, to remain married. They're, they're not stuck in that marriage bond, even though the spouse has left them. Okay, so they are freed from that that marriage. So abandonment is another uh, legitimate reason for divorce. Then there's the question of, of abuse. And abuse is challenging. The Bible never does uh, specifically uh, address abuse as a reason for divorce. I think at a minimum, and this is going to be me talking here, okay? So, so as I said, the Bible doesn't address this. So I'm going to just speak as as myself um, with hopefully some biblical counsel and some wisdom here, but I'm not interjecting myself in place of the word. Um, so I think at a minimum, you're allowed to, and, and in fact, encourage to get help and even to get out of a dangerous situation. Okay, so to remove yourself from harm's way. Um so that part, I think, is I don't think there's any anything that would that would speak against that. Um, part of the help that you get, in addition to this, should be wise and godly counsel, you know, from a pastor or from from some other uh, Christian source whom you trust and who has has wisdom, especially about these matters, um, and let them guide you through this because there's every situation is going to be different. And so it's hard in, in a video like this to say, you can do this, you can't do this. Um, each situation is different. Um, I don't think that there's a biblical principle that says, that tells you that you have to re remain or return to a life-threatening situation. However, there can also, of course, be situations where abuse, the abusive, the abusive spouse is repentant and willing to seek help. And so that may leave opportunities for the marriage to be restored at some point. So um, again, it's that's a it's a challenging issue, and it's one where um, I don't think that we're called to to remain in in the abusive situation. There are ways you, know, you can remove yourself without necessarily having to get divorced, uh, but you there may be cause. It may be that that abandonment is is happening in a sense that the the person is putting you in this situation where you cannot be with them. And that is a form of abandonment. Um, but again, I would say find godly, you know, Christian counsel and work through that with them. Cause you're going to deal with that situation on a one by one situation, but ultimately we should strive not to get divorced. You know, that's, you know, marriage is meant to be for a lifetime and we should try, uh, try to keep that. We shouldn't be looking for reasons to get divorced you know to the married i give this charge not i but the lord the wife should not separate from her husband um you know the husband should not divorce his wife that so that is what what we should do um that that's the the drive and then i would say if if with wisdom and outside counseling you feel that you need to separate or even divorce for a reason other than these legitimate reasons that um the goal would be to restore the marriage so if for some reason you know you, you need a break if you will um that that if, if you if you do take that and you know again seek counsel on this uh but if you were to do that the the intent is to reconcile and restore the marriage um you know the the intent is not to just get out Again, we want to work together to try to make these things happen. But I also, you know, I understand it takes two to do that. 
and sometimes the other is not willing to be there. Um, there's something else I wanted to say with this, and now it's oh yeah, even even in the case of adultery, that's the case. You know, where I mean, you are now free. It's a legitimate reason to get divorced, so you can say, okay, you know what, we're done. But you are also free to say, are you repentant for this? And if they are, say, let's work on restoring this marriage. Um, so, and again, I'm not saying that you have to do that. God has given us a, an out there, if you will, but that is uh, something that's good. And even if you don't get remarried or, or stay married, that having that reconciliation between the two, that is something that we should strive for. All right. Last thing I wanted to look at is remarriage. Uh, this is also a, a big question with folks. So are you allowed to get married again if you've been divorced? Now, if if you've been, if your spouse dies, then the answer is clearly yes. Uh, we saw that in our original uh, passage from Romans. Uh, we see that in uh, in First Corinthians. So that that is definitely uh, you're allowed to I think it was even there in Matthew. So yes. Um, can you remarry when it's a divorce? Well, if we look back at that Matthew passage. Let me find that again. Here we go. I say to you, whoever divorces his wife except for sexual immorality and marries another commits adultery. Well, if it's, you know, that gives that reason of sexual immorality. So then you are now freed from that bond, the bond of marriage at that point, and you are free to remarry. So if there's adultery, uh, remarriage is allowed. Um, in addition, we saw that with the first Corinthians passage. Um, and again, I have the wrong thing in here. We'll go back to the full chapter. Okay, I say to you, this is where we, you know, they were talking about abandonment, right? So um, if the, the spouse stays, great. If they don't, though, then they are, they're free, right? You're not in bondage to that marriage anymore. Um, so an abandoned remarriage would be uh, something that's fine. But in these, in cases, an abuse may fit in there. Again, that one's a little unclear. But in the cases where it's not, where the, there's not infidelity and there's not abandonment, um, and there's if there's no legitimate reason for that marriage, you're just deciding you don't want to be married anymore, then remarriage is not actually given as an option. I mean, that's what uh, that Matthew, uh, let's go back to that. That's what Jesus says there in Matthew, right? That if, they, if you marry another, you're committing adultery. Um, you know, and again, here we should, uh, that if, this is in 1 Corinthians 7, right? But if she does, if she leaves the husband, she should remain unmarried or else be reconciled to her husband. So when we're, when people are getting divorced for just, you know, no cause divorce, or we're just irreconcilable differences or whatnot, we just can't figure out how to get along. That's not, remarriage is not given as an option. So the, you know, you may get divorced, which you know, is something that we're not supposed to do in the first place. But um, if you do that, then you're really committing to a life outside of marriage and to not have, be married anymore. You're saying, I'm, I'm just not going to be married. Um, so that's the, and I think if we, if we treated it that way, maybe people would be a little less desirous to get divorced, a little, little slower on pulling that, that lever because they know that now they're saying, okay, well, I'm just I'm out of the marriage game at this point um all too easily we just move on to the next marriage and that's uh that's not what the scriptures tell us so um <clears throat> yeah i hope this answers at least some of the questions i know there's a lot of questions out there with all this and i know this doesn't go into extreme depth this is already a lot longer of a video than i had intended to make um, but i hope that it's helpful and it's helpful to be thinking through these things um, this is not intended as um, an attack on anything in the sense that if you have been in this, in one of these situations and now you're looking at this saying, well, shoot, I, I guess I wasn't supposed to do that. Um, again, as with any sin, there is repentance and forgiveness. So you can always, uh, you know, just repent of the sin and be forgiven for it. And 
move on, if you will, from that. But uh, so that would be the, you know, the, the good news with it, since it always is. Uh, the gospel is always the good news, literally what it means. Uh, so this is intended to give direction and uh, repentance if, if needed. Um, and I hope it is helpful. So and I hope it helps to answer some questions. And if you have more questions and you want to talk about it with me, let me know. Uh, shoot me an email or give me a text or, or whatever. I'm happy to talk to you about it. And um, if you have additional questions and I and you want me to make another video about you know about some of these other questions that people have about marriage or that you have about marriage and divorce and remarriage and all of that, then uh, again, just uh, let me know and I'd love to love to make another one. All right, well, we've gone very long here, but thank you for sticking with me if you did. And uh, obviously you won't hear me thanking you if you didn't. So uh, again, I hope this is a blessing and I pray a blessing for uh, the rest of your day and hope to see you back here tomorrow as we get back to our normal uh, Romans uh, Bible study and sticking with the, the actual text there. Uh, this being a little bit of a, a jump off point for a moment. But uh, may the Lord uh, bless you and keep you, make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you and give you his peace. Amen. Have a great day.